Welcome back to the Black Hills and Eastern Railroad, everybody. We are taking one last look at control panels here. I'm sick of talking about it, and you guys are sick of hearing about it. This one is a little bit different because um, I'm going to install uh, bipolar LEDs here for indicator lights, and I'm going to experiment with strip LEDs that we talked about and a couple of episodes ago. Uh, so I have a crossover here. I've already installed the switch and I'll get LEDs put in here and show you how I'm doing that uh, to indicate the position of the switch here. This is going to control two tortoise machines here. So there's a tortoise here and there's a tortoise here and this one switch will align both of them um, and we'll have bipolar red and green LED lights here that indicate the direction of the switch. Black Hills and Eastern Railroad from the plains of the Sioux Empire to the heart of the hills. I have here a pair of bipolar LEDs and what I'm going to do is oppose the legs. I'm going to solder the two short legs together and then solder the long legs to the power in and power out and we'll figure out which one goes which way by the direction of the way the switches go. So I'm going to tin the wire but that I'm going to put between the legs of the LEDs here. And then I'm going to tin the short legs of these two LEDs. I'm using this curved beak needle nose plier for uh, not only for a heat sink but also for helping hand sort of a little mini portable vise here to keep things in place while I solder. And then I've cut a piece of heat shrink here to fit over the wire and the leg of the LED. And then on this other LED I've already placed the uh, heat shrink tubing and uh, soldered the short leg and I'll slide the heat shrink tubing up over the the joint here. So what I've ended up with is the two legs soldered together and the long legs. Uh, one of them will be for the power in and one of them will be the power out to the tortoise machine. So now in the center of your screen I have the leg out from the switch here, the DPDT switch. I'm tinning it. I've got the uh, piece of uh, heat shrink already installed there. So now I'm soldering the or tinning the long leg here of this last LED. This will be the wire that goes out to the tortoise machine. I have the wire tinned and I have a little piece of heat shrink on. Only a little bit of heat's needed there. And we'll slide that heat shrink up over the LED. So just to review here what we've got going on, essentially this is the same setup as before that I've done here on the Black Hills and Eastern Railroad. I have these uh, two bipolar LEDs soldered in the same configuration basically with the DPDT switches with the solid leg, the solid wire coming out from one of these legs on the switch in through um, the long leg on this first LED and then a a wire to both of the between the both of the short legs on the two LEDs and then the wire going out to the tortoise switch machine here. So we're going to test this and see how it works. So I did end up having to reverse the wires on the first tortoise machine. I've only got uh, this machine in here right now but all I need to do now is jumper from uh, that machine to the other machine kind of da daisy chain them together and we'll have a working system here. I did feel the need to um, secure these LEDs to the backside of the panel here with some poster putty. I use that in engine applications as well uh, when securing wires inside engine shells and other things, but I think you've got the idea here of what's going on. So I wanted to wrap this up quick like here by showing this crossover set for the the switches are individually are set for the crossover position from coming from the yard throughout here over to the Marshall Sub main line out to Garrison from the Sioux City yard here and taking a look at the panel um, it indicates such and if I threw the switch you see the indicator lights reverse and you see this light here go to red and the main line is cleared through. The polarity reverses as do the switches are now set for their normal positions, if you will. And that's exactly what we wanted out of this deal. 
So here's part B. I have here a roll of, uh, these are continuous glow surface mount LEDs that I bought off of amazon.com. I'll try and get you a link in the description below. Um, these you can cut apparently every so often, every time there's one of those pads to solder to. Um, I intend to provide light underneath uh, the bench work here for these panels. I will grab power off of the backside here um, using the power that I've provided for the um, tortoise machines and um, just wire. And then these are actually self-adhesive. They've got uh, 3M backing here in order to, uh, to fix them on the underside of the bench work. We're going to be using these too uh, if this experiment works out in the hidden staging areas to provide light. Uh, I know darn well that we're probably gonna have to reroute trains in there every once in a while and see what we're doing. Even though it is hid hidden staging, it won't be foolproof at all times. I'd like to further note, this is a complete experiment here. So if this fails colossally, I'll show you that. And if it works out, I'll show you that as well. So I think I'd stop short of calling this an unmitigated success, but I've unrolled these uh, continuous LEDs. And uh, I think they're good enough to go ahead and mount up underneath the bench work to uh, shine light on the uh, panels here. And I think they'll work for uh, the staging areas as well. Um, I've got temporary wiring here, just as a little pigtail, sort of test fit, if you will, to see if it'll work. Um, I have every reason to believe that it will, so I'll go ahead and get these mounted. This one mounted up here underneath this uh, Sioux City panel. So I, here I am with a little of this LED strip uh, cut to length here for underneath the bench work. And I'll show you this working here after a bit, but uh, I want to join these together. I've got heat shrink on my power in wires here. I wanted to note that uh, uh, since LEDs are directional, your re results may vary as far as uh, which wire you're hooking up to uh, from that uh, wall warp transformer because uh, LEDs will only work with power going in a certain direction. That's what makes these bi-directional uh, LEDs work here. And uh, if you hook them up, uh, to the correct power source and they don't work, uh, chances may be that you have them uh, soldered or connected improperly uh, backwards and try, try them the other way and chances are they will work. So I'm going to join these up and uh, get this mounted here and show you what it looks like. I did want to make a note here though that uh, while I was doing this off camera I made a major mistake and absentmindedly walked on some of this LED strip and um, I fear that I may have destroyed certain sections of them by uh, probably crushing the ribbon cable and creating a short. Uh, this, this section here though I have verified does work. This is the factory and uh, the very end of the cable inside the, uh, the roll. So I'm uh, confident this, this one will work. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this before or not. Uh, this particular roll of LEDs comes with um, 3 m sticky backing, so all you do is peel the tape off of here and stick it to whatever you, wherever you need it to be, and um, you should be good in your installation. So I'm just going to go ahead and peel the backing off of this LED line here and stick it to where I need it. Um, I've already test fit this in, and I have good confidence that this is what we need. And again, we messed up. I took both the sticky and the backing with me when I peeled this here, so we're gonna have to try this over again. So here I am soldering on a section that I've cut from this ribbon LEDs. And I'm tinning the solder pad on this section that I've cut. And we're going to see if we can make this work with the power supply we've got on board here. So here I've soldered to the pads on a cut section of this strip LED. And it looks like it works just fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and install this on this panel here and probably likewise on all the other panels around the layout and this seems to work great and i appreciate the uh words of encouragement that came from uh you the youtube viewers here on black hills and eastern railroad this is for sure not all the work that remains on switch panels here on the black hills and eastern railroad but it's probably all we're going to show here for a while and we're going to move on to other things like uh, 
bench work and uh, working on some rail car and engine projects uh, after the first of the year here. So uh, goal has been accomplished to uh, get to bench work here over Christmas break and we'll be able to get started on that at least in small part and we would be moving through that process here in January, February and hopefully uh, getting uh, trains running on the mid-level and the upper level here very shortly. Here's where we're going to pull the pin on this particular episode. I hope you like the content here. Smash that like button if you did. Subscribe for more and hopefully, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.